Chuck Neprey Sports Cards, Donald Crossover Paranormal, Hey Donald Sensei Domino, three people right off the get go, 208, 213, we'll close off the early birds, 213, let me get everything ready and lined up here. Chuck the pre sports card says, hey cops. Alright. Don't forget, thummies up, thummies up, thummies up for me. Get them in early. Get them up high. Alright. Let's see here. there. Hey Sensei. Alright. As we're waiting for people to come in, 213 will end the early bird entries, get you all logged in, give you an update. We are up to six prizes on the wheel. Six prizes on the wheel. Got just barely over 600 from yesterday's stream. We made into the sixth tier in the channel. So other than that, Big Ray's in the house. Hey down there, Big Ray. Hello, Don. Hello, Chuck. Turn this off whenever it does pop on, if I can. Again. We are... Oh, I know what I'm doing here. Oh, hold on. Adjusted. Just didn't adjust on the. No, not quite all the way, huh? I think I got it off. Guess that's as hot. Oh, there we go. I can get it right there right now. To the quad threes, that's the end. Two more minutes. Two minute warning for the. For the chime in for the early birds. Yeah. Get another yogurt covered pretzel. One more minute to go. Got a little bit of a biography for John J. McGraw. For our Hall of Fame biography episode 209, John McGraw Trivia 2023's Top Stadium Club Blaster Box. Plus, maybe a duel again if we get up to 10 thumbs up. Hoping to try and give us a buster yesterday. We had good services at church last night. Our new pastor presented the gospel and the visuals of what Christ did on the cross for us. It was a really nice Lord's Supper last night in our church. That's for sure. Alright, the early birds are done. So speak now or forever hold your peace. Let me know if I did if I don't get you by the time we go through when we finish off our commercial. New 2024 Patreon rookie class tiers, which will include rookie cards, rated rookies, gold cups, rising stars, prospects, minor leaguers, etc. 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 Uh, the triple tiers will contain one newer rookie card type, the three Triple threes, tier one, four cards. Triple fives, tier two, six cards. Triple sevens, tier three, eight cards. And triple nines, tier four, ten cards. The quad tiers will contain one Hall of Fame rookie card type. 
and they are as follows. The quad ones, tier five, 12 cards. The quad twos, tier six, 25 cards. And the quad threes, tier seven, 40 cards. You wanna sign up for Patreon? Sign up. You won't be billed until April the 1st. So you can sign up today. You don't have to pay until the 1st. So once I receive the payment from Patreon is when your package will be shipped out. I thought I already had that fixed. Oh, that's right. I added those other ones last night. So we are today. Today is the 27th. And we are at 6.01. Let me just double check to make sure that's what the wheel of name says. I forgot I missed these six down here, but I added them on 601, yes. 601 is our new update on here. But we will get right on in here. Uh, go back here. Chime up at the top at 208 for Chuck Debris. We got Chuck in here for three points. With a plus. A crossover Paranormal. Cops is here with a three. All right. Sensei Domino's here for three. All right. Chuck Dupree. Chuck. Chuck. Big race ball card is in the house with a three. All right, Big Ray, Chuck, Sensei, Cops. Hey, Big Ray, Chuck, Semi Truck 75s in the house. With the three. Big Ray's ball cards, trucker, ended it, but we'll still log everybody in here. Uh, Big Ray, semi truck, and Big Ray. What's Big Ray saying there? Judas Betrayal, Wednesday. All right, so let me do a refresh on the chat here. I'm going to read through real quick who I've got in here. I'm going to give Bernie a, an honorarium as my number one Patreon. All right, Bernie H., Big Ray, Chuck Dupree, Cops, Sensei Domino, and Matt, a.k.a. Semi Truck 75. That's who I got. Make sure you just let me know really quick here before we get into our trivia then our biography, then our blaster box. Okay, so again, Bernie H. Big Ray, Chuck Dupree, Cops, Sensei Domino, and Matt, AKA 75. Okay. Today's I'm gonna go I'm gonna go a stretch. If you can get all six answers correct, I will give you ten entries. Ten entries. If you can only name some of the players and not all six, whoever gets the most correct if somebody doesn't get all six, I will give you an entry for every one that you get correct. So again, get all six and you'll get 10 entries, okay? Let me just get it ready here. All right, so the baseball birthdays for today, Wednesday, March 27th, are 
Miller Huggins, Lynn McLaughlin, Dick Ruthven, and Buster Posey. But we're going to have some baseball humor coming up next. It's going to be a tricky one, but we'll see. All right. Um, and I will type it in the chat when I want you to start putting your guesses in. And do me one favor, unless you can't guess all, put your answers in one chat. One chat. I don't want you to think of a name and then add it, and think of a name and add it. And then, oh wait, let me, I, I thought of another one. Wait, I'll add it. So I'll give you guys five minutes um, after I push the button to start the trivia guessing to come up with your answers, okay? And as long as I'm going through and reviewing the answers, if somebody, I, I won't do an official end, but I'll tell you when the five minute mark is officially over. Kinda, somewhat, sorta, okay? So baseball humor. Name six players eligible for an All Flowers team. Name six players eligible for an All Flowers team. So just so you know, the answers on these ones are types of flowers or something relating to flowers. So. Start your trivia guessing now. Kevin's Models and Moors in the house. Hey, down there, Kevin. Thanks for popping in here. Let me get you in here because you're right at the start of this whole thing. I think I saw the enter button when I cleared everything. So we got Kevin in for three. Okay. Let me set this off to the side here real quick. So again, name six players eligible for an All Flowers team. An All Flowers team. Okay. All of this here, because it doesn't give you any answers on there. Let's see, I did that at 2.20, so at 2.25, we'll end the entries. Doing pretty good there, Kevin. It's just not the same with you hanging out with us anymore. But that's okay. Kevin's models and more is in the house. Seen a couple of games during spring training. I think uh, one or two that we played with Arizona, and of course that we just played a two-game series with San Diego, Petco Park. So other than that, it's been fun getting ready for baseball. Tomorrow is the Seattle Mariners home opener. I almost wish I could go to it. Gonna be fun from what I hear. What do we got? 222. So we got three more minutes to get your guesses in for the trivia. Again, it's baseball humor. Name six players eligible for an All Flowers team. Once we finish the trivia, we'll go right into John J. McGraw's biography. Go and get a jump start. I'll read this real quick for you. John J. McGraw, oops, star third baseman of the great Baltimore Orioles National League champions in the 90s for, thir for uh, 30 years at uh, manager of the New York Giants starting in 1902. Under his leadership, the Giants won 10 pennants and 5 world champions championships. 
That's right. Guess the best you can on those. And when we get, we got another minute to go here. We'll see who gets the most guesses correct. And or on that row. I'll go by my sheet here, but if they're actual baseball players, I'll consider them. But we're going for, if somebody can name all six players, you will get 10 entries. So let me get in here. All right. So it looks like uh, Chuck made a guess, Big Ray made a guess, and Kevin made a rep, made a guess. Let's see. I'm gonna I'm gonna write them down and see who got the most. So we have Chuck. Big Ray and Kevin. Chuck, Big Ray, and Kevin. them off here and then I'll go through the list real quick and see how many you guys might have got or if you got somebody that's not on here we'll probably consider it if we can verify that it's an actual baseball player Ted Lilly Daisy Davis Pete Rose Jimmy Lavender Frank Viola uh, Red the Nashville Narcissus Lucas so that's one, two, three, four, five, and six. So let's see. Chuck was the first one. He said Pete Rose. Uh, and Tyler Flowers. Was Tyler Flowers a... Well, we'll see how we do on, on these first. All right, so Big Ray got Ben Flowers. Don't see a Ben Flowers. But we got Dicky Flowers. Don't see the other flowers either. Uh, Cole Tyler Flowers. Man, they're all about, they're all flowers. Jake Flowers and Wes Flowers. I don't have any flowers in here. <laughs> and then Kevin said Pete Rose. Pete Rose for Kevin. Bobby Tulip. Bobby Tulip. <laughs> uh, Gene Daisy. Gene Daisy. I got Daisy Davis. Jimmy Lavender, Frank Viola, uh, Red, the Nashville Narcissist, Lucas, uh, Steve Davidel, Antonio Flores, and Terry Flowers. My, my word. Went with the players all with the last name of Flowers. Uh, Tyler Flowers played for the White Sox. I have his autograph. Oh, there you go, Chuck. So, oh, I don't know how I can check this one. Chuck got one on my list, and Kevin got one on my list. I could almost give them a tie, one, one, one entry a piece. I don't know if you guys are pulling my legs with the flower name or not. 
as much as Don emphasized flowers, I thought it was a trick question since we had a similar question to this previously. Don't bother checking anyone but Pete Rose. <laughs> well, Jimmy Lavender. Got Frank Viola. I've heard of a Viola flower. Uh, Red the Nashville Narcissist. Lucas. Ted Lilly. I know what lilies are, especially Easter time. And Daisy Davis. So, I think I'll give one to, one to Chuck and one to Kevin. Okay, so let's go one to Chuck, one to Kevin, and Big Ray, you're, you, you're saying they're jet, legit, all those flowers players, must have been a family of flowers there. Well, how, how many did, oh, you, you don't have to take them off. Let's see. Ben Flowers, Dicky Flowers, Cole Tyler Flowers, Jake Flowers, and Wes Flowers. So that's one, two, three, four, and five. I'll give you five for the flowers, the flowers bouquet. Let me see. Let me see what we got here. Let me see if I can find it real quick. Um, I'll erase it right afterwards. If it's legit, I'm pretty sure it probably is. I don't think Big Big Ray would pull my. There we go. Ben Flowers, Dickie Flowers, Jake Flowers, Johnny Flowers, Tyler Flowers, Wes Flowers. They're actually here, right there in the baseball reference. So, I'll give Kevin one, Chuck one, and Big Ray, I'll give, I gave you those five. I'll give you those five. But those are the answers on my sheet here. In case anybody is one is a wandering, anybody is a wandering. Those are the ones that are on the official list. But Chuck got one, Kevin got one, and we'll give Big Ray one for being a good sport and finding all five flowers. <laughs> all right. Let's go ahead and put this off to the side. We got our trivia done for today. We're going to get into our biography now. As soon as I take a station identification break here. And have maybe for now one more of these. Oh, I only got one left, huh? Why don't I save those two and just take the crumbs? Okay, there we go. Hmm. We tried, Chuck. Not your sure, Kevin. That's okay. I would have did the same thing. Flowers. <laughs> All right. So let's put this one down here. I think tomorrow we're doing McGraw or McGriff. Yeah, we're doing Crime Dog tomorrow. We're gonna do Crime Dog's biography tomorrow. But today we're gonna do we're gonna do John J. McGraw. 
and he was around a little bit in the 18, late 1800s, early 1900s. We're going to do John McGraw coming up here for our biography for today. Let me do a refresh on the chat here. John McGraw. Oh, let me get a sip of water real quick before we do start. Gotta wait for my computer to to switch over here. Now we're good to go. John McGraw. John Joseph McGraw was born April seventh, eighteen seventy-three. He's an old timer. He's an old timer for sure. All right. He was an American Major League Baseball player and manager who was who was for almost 30 years manager of the New York Giants. He also was the third baseman of the pennant-winning 1890s Baltimore Orioles team, noted for their innovative innovative aggressive play. McGraw was born into poverty in Truxton, New York. He found an escape from his hometown and a bad family situation through baseball. Beginning a quick rise through the, the minor leagues that led him to the Orioles at the age of 18. Under the tutelage of manager Ned Hanlon, the Orioles of the 1890s won three National League pennants. McGraw was one of the stalwarts of the team alongside Wee Willie Keeler, Hugh Jennings, and Wilbert Robinson. The Orioles um, perfected the hit and run play popular and popularized the Baltimore Chop. They also sought to win by intimidating the opposing teams and the umpire. Hey. See you later, guys. I'm done with getting ignored. It's getting old. Chuck, I'm uploading a launch video. Should be. Chuck, sometimes I wonder how some people get out of bed in the morning. What? Seriously. Are you related to Biden? Who? Me? Not sure why, Kevin. We tried. Oh, Chuck gets two? Did I miss one? Oh, Ty oh, he did get Tyler Flowers. That's right. So Chuck gets another entry. I wasn't ignoring you, Chuck. I wasn't really ignore ignoring you. There we go. Chuck's got two. Kevin's got one. Think of Kevin. You didn't have. A, did you have flowers in yours, Kevin? Pete Rose, Bobby Tulip, Gene Daisy, Steve Davidil, Antonio Flores, and oh, and Terry Flowers. You got flowers, so you get one too, Kevin. Kevin gets one. He gets a two instead of a one. I wasn't ignoring you guys on purpose. You guys gotta say stop the show. You gotta put that little stop sign in there. So I know stop the show. You missed the chat. That's why I don't know anymore these days. You try to do what you can to give people free stuff and they still complain. I think he wrote down your entries correct Chuck he just said it wrong it's 
gotten old. Oh, I think everybody's fine. They're just fussing. They're treating me like Biden. I'm just an old befuddled man on YouTube that don't know his head from a hole in the ground. But I still enjoy the company when they show up on the stream. Okay. So let's let's continue on with the biography. Oh, let me do a refresh so I don't miss somebody else's chat here. I think I'm caught up on the chats. Did I miss anything else in the chat there, Big Ray? Hopefully not. That's okay. Behind the scenes, I always give people free entries anyway for, for being nice in the chat. Uh, what does... So sometimes I wonder how some people get out of bed in the morning. Sore and creaky, you young whippersnapper. <laughs> yeah, that's sometimes the fact, too. Get up in the morning, you got to walk around, move around till your joints get moving. One of these days you'll catch up to me, Chuck. Uh, I'm uploading a lunch video. Should be up in a bit. Oh, there you go, Chuck. You have something to watch there. Kevin's loading up one of his new videos. See you guys later. I'm done with getting ignored. Got an old fast. Big Ray says, I think he wrote down your entries correct, Chuck. He just said it wrong. All right. Thank you, dear Big Ray. We'll continue on with the biography. That's probably why my numbers just keep going down my YouTube channel, because I don't pay attention to the chat enough. But that's okay. Friends can be friends. So I'm going to continue on here. Otherwise, we'll never get the biography done. The instability in the MLB at the turn of the 20th century led McGraw to becoming a manager of the Orioles at the age of 26 in 1899. And he was lauded for his leadership. The National League Orioles were dissolved after 1899. And McGraw spent one season with the St. Louis Cardinals before returning to Baltimore as a player manager of the new Orioles of the American League. He quarreled with American League President Van Johnson and jumped to the Giants in 1902, taking several Orioles players with him. Through his just short of 30 years managing the Giants, McGraw ex exerted control on players and team and saw great success winning 10 pennants matched only by Casey Stengel, who played for and learned from him, and three World Series. His 2,763 victories as an MLB manager ranks third overall behind only Connie Mack and Tony La Russa. He holds the National League record with 31 seasons managed. McGraw is widely held to be one of the greatest managers in baseball history. He retired um, ill in 1932 and died less than two years later after making a final appearance in 1933 as the National League manager in the first All-Star game. Uh, you're fine, Don. Maybe just a bad day for Chuck. We have all had them. All been there. Sorry if I added to that, Chuck. I think Chuck's gone. He said, I'm getting... Uh, see you guys later. I'm done with getting ignored. It's gotten old. Alright. So as far as the early years, McGraw's father, also named John, immigrated from Ireland in... 1856. Yeah, we're going through a swig of these Mech people. I didn't know McGriff was 
was Irish, but maybe he is. He probably has an, probably has an Irish dad. That's what I'm thinking, maybe. I don't know for sure. Uh, McGraw's father, uh, also named John, immigrated from Ireland in 1856. He arrived before the Civil War and served in the Union Army. He married, but his first wife soon died, leaving him with a young daughter, and he moved to Truxton, New York in 1871, where he became a railroad worker. There he married young Ellen Comfort. The younger John McGraw, her first child, was born in Truxton on April 7, 1873. The family was poor with eight children, and there was no public assistance available. Young John had a love of baseball from an early age. By doing odd jobs, he was able to save a dollar and send off for one of those Spalding Company's cheaper baseballs, which he used to practice as pitching. His pitching. Tragedy struck the family in the winter of 1885 when there was a diphtheria epidemic in the area and the disease killed Ellen McGraw and four of the McGraw children, including John's older half-sister. John Sr. never fully recovered from the trauma of the deaths. Father and son argued over the time young John spent on baseball, especially since the father had to pay for windows. The son broke while playing. Later, in 1885, after young John broke another window, the father became abusive, and the son ran away to a neighbor, Mary God Goddard, who ran the local hotel. She persuaded John Sr. to let his son stay in her care. During his time in Goddard's house, household, John attended school and took on several jobs that allowed him to save money to buy baseballs and the Spalding magazines that documented the rule changes in the rival major league of baseball, the National League, and the American Association. He quickly became the best player on his school team. Shortly after his 16th birthday, he began playing for his town's team, the Truxton Grays, making a favorable impression on their manager, Albert Burt Kenny, while he could play any position. His ability to throw a big curveball made him the star pitcher. McGraw's relationship with Kenny uh, precipitated his professional playing career. As far as his pre uh, playing career, in 1890, Kenny bought a portion of the new professional baseball franchise in Orlean, Olean, New York. A team was to play in the newly formed New York Pennsylvania League. In return uh, for his investment, he was named Olean's player manager, responsible for selecting and signing players when approached by John Mc McGraw. Kenny doubted the boys' curveball would uh, fool professional ball players, persuaded by the insurance that McGraw could play any position, Kenny signed him to a contract on April 1, 1890. Uh, McGraw would never return to live in Truxton, the place of his birth. Olean was 200 miles, 320 kilometers from Truxton, and was the farthest young. ever traveled from his hometown. He began the season on the bench. And two day, after two days, Kenny inserted him into the starting lineup at third base, and McGraw later described his professional game. For the life of me, I could not run to get it. It seemed like an age before I could get the ball in my hands, and then as I looked over to first, it seemed like the longest throw he had ever had to make. The first baseman was the tallest in the leg, but threw the ball far over his head.
then he went on to Baltimore. In 1891 to 1894, during his the short part of the 1891 season, McGraw was with the or Orioles, and he hit 245. Initially, he played shortstop, but his poor fielding, 18 errors and 86 chances, caused Barney, who quit before the end of the season, to try him in other positions. Despite his poor fielding percentage, McGraw was quickly signed to a contract for 1892 by the club owner Harry Bonderhorst. The American Association failed after the 1891 season, and the Orioles and other surviving franchises moved to an expanded 12-team National League team. Ooh, I got a sip of water. He was busy and Sporadic in 1893, Hamlin secured Hughie Jennings from the Louisville Colonels, a shortstop whose acquisition caused Hamlin to displace McGraw from that position. The team finished eighth in 1893, while McGraw hit 327 second on the club to Robinson and led the leg in runs scored. He spent a second winter at St. Bonaventure. Uh, this time with Robinson as his assistant coach and fellow student. During the offseason, McGraw narrowly avoided being dealt to the woeful Washington Senators when a trade for Duke Farrell fell through. Deciding McGraw could handle third base, Hanlon uh, traded two infielders for uh, five-time batting champion Dan Brothers and diminutive outfielder Willie Keeler. By 1894, McGraw was settled in at third base under manager Ned Hanlon. An unerring talent spotter for the Orioles, won uh, three straight pennants, making them the second best team of the decade. Boston, which won five pennants in the decades, was better, but is the Orioles, uh, who are remembered as the team of the 1890s. Uh, not just for their skill, but also for their style. Aggressive and creative, the O's either invented or perfected the hit and run. The Baltimore Chop, they also led the leg in unsportsmanlike uh, conduct. Cat also led the league in unsportsmanlike conduct. Uh, Kate N. Murphy in 2007. Crazy 08. Uh, a cast of crank rogues, bended boneheads, and magnates created the greatest year in baseball history from page 18 in that book. Alright. In 1895, the Orioles' big four, McGraw, Jennings, Keeler, and Joe Kelly, held out to start 1895, but came to terms with the club in time for spring training. St. Louis and the American Leg Orioles. Syndicate baseball was insufficient to revive the finances of the National League before the 1900 season. Four National League teams, including Baltimore, were ended. McGraw and Robinson were sold to the St. Louis Cardinals. And they did not report until the season had begun, having secured increases in salary and a concession that their contracts would not contain the then standard reserve clause.
that bound them to signing uh, a signing team for the following season. Thus, they would be free agents after the 1900 season. Injured for part of the season, McGraw had 337 and 98 games as the Cardinals finished tied for fifth. But when manager Patsy Thibault reassigned in August, McGraw ruled out replacing him. Van Johnson, president of the Major League uh, Western League, sought to build a second Major League which would seek to attract fans wanting baseball without rowdyism. Or his circuit, the American League, and sought to put franchises in abandoned National League cities like Baltimore they became key to his plans. He was confided he could control them since one of the requirements was the franchise grant the leg an option to buy a monthly stake and thus uh, take them over if necessary. Even while under contract for, to the Cardinals, McGraw and Robinson were involved in meeting, aim, meetings aimed to upgrading the Western League to the Major League status on November the 12th, 1900. They signed an agreement with Jansen and Johnson, giving them exclusive rights to form an American League franchise in Baltimore, securing finance, financial backing from local figures. McGraw batted leadoff and managed the Orioles as Major League Baseball made them return to Baltimore in 1901, but missed games due to injuries because of a suspension. Uh, to Beyonce Sindal whose father was a Baltimore housing contractor. As far as man manager of the New York Giants in 1902 to 1932, McGraw started in the 1902 season with a knee injury, recovery from that, suspensions, and deep cut from the uh, sharpened spikes of a base runner meant he played fewer games for the Orioles. 1902 to 1904. By the time the Giants returned from the road trip to meet McGraw at their home field, the Polo Grounds, they had a record of 22 and 50, and were in in the last place in the National League. Released. true of the local team's management. The Giants finished last, and at the end of the season, Friedman sold the team to Brush, who had sold his interest in the Reds with his uh, knee injury, robbing him of much of his skill. McGraw batted 286 in 20 games with Baltimore and 234 in 35 games with the Giants. It would be his last season as a full-time player, though he normally remained on the roster until 1906. One stratagem used by McGraw was to have a pitcher Danny Taylor, who was deaf and could not speak, teach his teammates sign language, which both gave the team ways of communicating on the field and improved uh, Taylor's relationship with his teammates. The Giants used sign language until Chicago's Johnny Evers detected and learned it. In 1905 to 1908, McGraw continued building his team in the 1904-1905 offseason, purchasing Sammy Strang from Brooklyn 
as well as playing nearly every position. Strang pioneered a McGraw innovation, the pinch hitter. Part of his job was Confident of a third straight National League Championship, McGraw put his world champions on the front of his team's uniforms. But the drive for that was slowly Matthewson. And the Giants lost the game and the pennant 4-2. Despite the incident, McGraw urged Murky to put up the matter behind him, and when Merkel received the 1909 contract, he found McGraw had given him a raise of Then we got 1915 to 1919. The Giants finished last in 1915. Matthewson only won eight games, and he would win only four more after 1915, and McGraw discarded Marquard, Snodgrass, and Thorpe. Uh, content with his team, McGraw made a few changes before the 1917 season. Alexander described 1917 Giants as basically basically mediocre. By early June, the Giants were moving to a comfortable lead in the standings, one they held all season. McGraw was filmed and suspended by the Giants. The Giants were heavily favored to win the pennant again in 1918. They stayed close to the end of the early part of the season. In 1919, the Giants got out their usual hot start, winning 24 on their first of their first 32 games. Giants players Hal Chase and Heine Zimmerman may have helped to throw key games against Cincinnati during the season as the Giants finished second to the Reds. After it became clear how corrupt gambling had influenced baseball during 1919 season, the season of the infamous Chicago Black Sox, McGraw claimed to have taken action. Again, both players in a team transition with several older players remaining plus youngsters such as Ross Youngs and Frankie Frisch. There were setbacks such as Frisch's absence due to appendicitis and two short suspensions for McGraw who got into a possibly alcohol-fueled alcohol brawl at the Lambs Club on August the 8th and second secluded himself in his apartment in his absence. 1921 through 1924, at the start of the 21 season, McGraw felt that he had assembled his best team ever. This did not stop him from folding, from fiddling with his roster, and as he, in mid-season, made a deal with the Phillies, acquiring them, among others, Johnny Rawlings, Irish Musial, and Casey Stengel. The acquisition of Musial allowed McGraw to get to watch McGraw in action on the bench, but often spent the night at the McGraw house talking baseball until dawn. He watched as the Giants fell seven and a half games behind the Pirates, swept them in all five games in the late five game series in late August, and passed them on September 11th and won the pennant by four games. 
Before the 1923 season, McGraw published his memoirs, My 30 Years in Baseball. The 1923 season saw the Giants in first place the whole season, though they did not run away from the field, earning their straight in the 1923 World Series. Uh, then we got 1925 to 1931. During the remainder of McGraw's career, the Giants fielded some capable teams, but none proved enough to win the pennant. The Giants were expected to win a fifth straight National League pennant in 1925, but early injuries forced them back, allowing the Pirates to take an early lead. In 1925, the Pirates lost a series uh, to win a fifth straight National League pennant in 1925. As far as his retirement and his death, McGraw believed his 1932 team capable of winning the pennant, but the Giants got off to a poor start. McGraw missed much of a western road trip with illness, allowing Bancroft to manage during the subsequent homestand. think that's during the remainder of the season McGraw kept out of the way as uh, Terry who relaxed some of McGraw's strict rules for the players led to a team sixth place finish after spending much of the offseason the Giants won the 1933 National League pennant McGraw was presented present for all five games of the 1933 World Series in which the Giants defeated the Senators uh, at home in Branch Falham Manor, New York. Going now and then to the Giants offices in Manhattan, I was even able to attend the National League meetings in New York. He was admitted to the hospital in New Rochelle on February 16th. His wife remained with him and he received visits from Stoneham and others. On February 24th, he slipped into a coma and was given the last rites of the Catholic Church. He died the following morning at age 60. Commissioner Landis stated that McGraw pers personified the virile, competitive nature of baseball. Terry called him far and away the greatest baseball manager of all time, Ty Kung. Terry called him far and away the best baseball manager of all time. Ty Cobb called McGraw someone who put everything he had into baseball, both as a player and manager. The game needs more like him. The funeral mass took place in St. Patrick's Cathedral in New York on February 28th, after which McGraw's body was con conveyed by train to Baltimore, where he was placed in a vault at New Cathedral Cemetery, uh, pending burial in the spring. So, there we have it. In a nutshell, John McGraw. Here's his re recap of his MLB career. He was a third baseman and then a manager. Born April 7, 1873 in Truxton, New York in the United States. Died February 25, 1934 at the age of 60. New Rochelle, New York, United States. He batted left through right. His MLB debut August the 26th, 1891 for the Baltimore Orioles. His last MLB appearance, <coughs> excuse me, getting a frog in my throat, September 12th, 1906 for the New York Giants. His MLB statistics, batting average of 334, uh, 
home runs, 13, runs batted in, 462, stolen bases, 436 is managerial, correct? Record was 2,763 wins, 1,948 losses, with a winning percentage of 586. As a player, he played for the Baltimore Orioles, AANL 1891 through 1899, the St. Louis Cardinals 1900, the Baltimore Orioles 1901 and 1902, the New York Giants 1902 through 6, as a manager, the Baltimore Orioles in 1899, Baltimore Orioles 1901, 1902, New York Giants 1902 and 1903. And then his career highlights and awards, three times World Series champion 1905, 21, and 22. A name honored by the Giants. He's a member of the National Baseball Hall of Fame, inducted in 1937. His selection method was the Centennial Commission. So there you have it. John McGraw's biography as we close another book on episode number 209 for my Hall of Famers. Hall of Famers, 209 videos so far. By the time we're done, we'll have 365, I believe. So you'll know when we're getting closer when we start getting in to the 300s. But we got a lot of baseball players to go to. Nice bio done. Thanks there, Big Ray. Appreciate you being here, brother. Somebody's got to support me sometimes. Let me do a refresh, see if we how many thumbs up we've got. Probably just on one blaster today, maybe. Maybe one blaster. How many thumbs up we got today? Only four. A lowly four. Just so everybody does know, I'm, I'm, I'm going to try my hardest to do my April the 6th Whatnot First live auction on Whatnot. Easy to find me on Whatnot. Just look up Don Blomdahl HOF. Don Blomdahl HOF. All one word. D-O-N. Don Blomdahl. And then follow it with the HOF. <clears throat> Let me shift over here to the live stream here. And we'll keep moving forward here. Okay. Get ready to do this. If it's a short stream today, that's fine. We're just over an hour so far. But it won't take us too long to go through a blaster box here. Sometimes you just need a slow day. Not a snow day, a slow day. Hope there's no more snow days. We gotta start getting nicer weather here. We need nicer weather. Let's see who our who our master photo card is here. Oh, there we go. Master photo is Oh, we just had one of these. We just had one. We got another one, Ken Griffey Jr. Another Ken Griffey Jr. We'll put Ken Griffey Jr. up here. Just like he had his good spot yesterday. Oh, feels like a light load today. What do we got here? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There's our eight packs. this here, put it on the side down here, and let's go to town. Is it just me and you, Big Ray? I guess so. Everybody else left. Oh wait, there we go. God is great in the house. God is great in the house. You feeling better there, Titus? Hopefully you're starting to feel a little bit better. Sensei Domino is in the background. Alright, Sensei's still here. We got four thumbs up. 
we got six people watching, so somebody's not thumbing up in there. That's okay. If it happens, it happens. When it don't, it don't. So we got, uh, oh yeah, I need three cards to complete the set. I need number 10, Willie Mays. Number 113, uh, Michael Harris, rookie card. And we need number 138, Hideki Matsui. So we got uh, Davin Villar, rookie card for San Francisco. We've got Keith Hernandez. Base card. I keep forgetting to turn these over this way. 27, 125. Then we've got Javier Baez with the rosin. Base card. Then we've got a uh, Estere Ruiz, Oakland, probably black. Yep. I'm noticing some. What? Estre Ruiz. 247. Black. And then Bernie Williams playing the guitar in the stadium. 150, Bernie Williams base. 10 hours of sleep. Oh, you finally got a good night's sleep. That's good there, Titus. That's very good. I'm praying for you, brother. All right. Kodai Senga. Kodai Senga. 185 base. Then we got a Tim Anderson with the White Sox. Shout out to Chuck. Base. All right. Then we got a Jordan Alvarez. Tops Chrome. 276. Put the Tops Chrome right here for now. Then we got a Chief Fantasy. Dylan Cease with the Chicago White Sox. Shout out to Chuck again. Yep. All right, and then we've got a Corey Lee, 53, base. Getting harder and harder when you get down to the last couple cards you need to find some. The last one out of a 300 card set, you only need three more cards. Next one we got here is George Brett, base card for the Royals. Uh, Randy Rosarena, 153, base. Um, Tom Seaver with the Mets. Meyer, probably red. Yep, I read that one. Max Meyer, red. 206. Then we got a Satchel Page. Card number 45. Base. Okay. Pack number four. I caught influenza. You caught the actual. You mean the real flu? You mean the real flu? Not no COVID concoction. Eric Davis with Cincinnati. Base 260. JP Crawford. So yeah, we just need Mays, Harris, and Matsui. Two M's and a Harris. JP Crawford. Base. The flu has been bad this season. Yeah, we've had some people in our church get it too. Uh, Francisco Lindor, 
with the mats base then we've got Max Muncy probably a red yeah it's a red and then Brett Beatty rookie card for the Mets base all right halfway through Mays, Matsui, and Harris. I got my flu shot and caught it in January. Oh my word. Yep. Believe it or not, I haven't got a flu shot since I got out of the Navy. And I've been fine outside of my one bout with the Corona. Hank Aaron. Hank Aaron. Base. 103. Uh, Brady Singer, Kansas City, base 90. That's the card number I'm reading off on the back. Paul Goldschmidt with the Cardinals, base 187. JT Real Muto, another red with the Phillies. Then we got an Edward Cabrera with the Miami Marlins base 140. All right, two more packs after this one. Then I think we'll be done for today. Unless we get mysterious thumbs up showing up. Will Clark with the Giants base 291. Uh, Matt Walner, rookie card for the Twins, base. Then we've got a Wade Boggs, base, 240. Got a Virtuous of Velocity. Aaron Judge. No, it was upside down. That was real. Max Meyer, rookie card. 206. Alright, pack number seven. I quit getting flu shots about 15 years ago. It seemed I always got the flu when I got them. But I have had it maybe three times in 15 years haven't gotten them. I don't blame you, Big Ray. I do not blame you. Alex Verdugo. Uh, card number 84, base. Uh, Fiasco Hernandez with the Seattle Mariners, base 246. Javier Assad, rookie card for the Cubs base 209 uh, Starling Marte base color variation red then we got a, the Ken Griffey Jr. it's the same picture they use on the master photo Ken Griffey Jr. card number 39 that one's sleeved up here Ken Griffey Jr. here. It's kind of like a matching pair there. And last pack magic. Seems to help with the severity. There we go. Um, George Kirby with the Seattle Mariners. Base 242. Uh, Clayton Kershaw. Clayton Kershaw, base, 299. Um, Alex Rodriguez with the Seattle Mariners, sign of baseball cards there. Base, um, probably Hank Aaron, is this a base or? Nope, another red. 
another red for the Hank Aaron. And Will Brennan, rookie card for the Cleveland Guardians. Base, card number 38. We just go through, we need a 10, 113, and 38. 30, 138, not 38. I just doing a double check here, make sure I didn't miss them. I'm pretty sure I read every card. That was 137. Nope, needed to 138. Uh, let me do one last one last refresh here pretty sure we probably didn't get up to 10 thumbs up just making sure before we sign off for today get everybody logged in here for end of the two minute warning at the end here we got six thummies up there people alright so we're going to go ahead and close up shop today tomorrow we will have Fred McGriff's biography I did get the Pfizer COVID vac shot only because I was on immunotherapy cancer treatments and decided I needed to be safe and have to admit only time I had COVID was it was over in three days. <coughs> if I had COVID it was weak. Yep, probably just a mild flu problems with you. I'm sure I had it more than once myself, but once put me in the hospital for 18 days, so it is real, that's for sure, and my mom passed away from it. My dad passed away two years earlier, but he missed out on all the fun because he, he had advanced Alzheimer's and he passed away in the care center from his, uh, his Alzheimer's that he had. So other than that, I'm going to go ahead and get ready to lock everything up here. Do the two minute warning. this up here. What do we got? I can't think of anything else I need to mention. This is going to be my sleeve for my first auction on uh, on whatnot. It's 110 cards. Should have 110 items up for auction on the 6th of April. These are inserts autographs, short prints, things of that nature. If between now and then I do come up with some more stuff, I'll keep you posted if we're going to add more things in there. But that's all I've got for today. All I've got for today. I'm going to wait until 328 to go ahead and do the end stream. That will put us just a little over, just shy of an hour and a half for today. So other than that, I'm going to work on getting some of my stuff ready for my whatnot auction. I'll see how long that takes to get those together so I'll know for future auctions. But start the end of stream two minute warning. Here, there, and everywhere. God is great, sir. God is great in the house. Uh, Sensei Domino's here with three entries. All right, Big Ray, I'm over there for Big Ray.
stay down with great stream. Have a great night, everyone. Thanks, Her Sensei. Appreciate you being here. Got you logged in here. You too, Sensei. So, we got a little less than a minute to go here, and then we'll log off here. And we'll see you all tomorrow. Same bat time, same bat channel tomorrow, 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time. And we'll have some fun. Everything up. I don't think we'll make it up to the seventh tier yet, but we still got uh, Thursday and Friday to go. Two more days. This Friday we'll have the end of month giveaway. Okay. We'll have the end of month giveaway. So, end the two minute warning. We're going to end everything up here. It's been fun, it's been real. Sorry we had a little bit of conflict with the trivia, but we'll see what how things will progress after this month. So until then, y'all take care. Last Supper, Thursday, tomorrow. Wash some feet, people. All right there, Big Ray. So this has been Don Blomdahl, Hall of Fame Veterans, Sports Cards and More, HOF Biography, Episode 209, John McGraw, Trivia. 2023 top stadium club blaster box and we did not make a bonus faction because we didn't get 10 thumbs up maybe tomorrow maybe friday we'll see what kind of fun we'll have between now and the end of the month so until then you all take care have a wonderful and blessed night and as david says in the end of all his dreams that's guru for those that don't know it's not just words but be blessed. Y'all take care and have a wonderful night. We'll see you around the channels and we'll see you tomorrow 2 p.m. Pacific Standard Time with episode 2-9.